Hello, I'm Emma, I'm one of the midwives at St Peter's and I'm here to talk to you about the second stage of labour. So the second stage of labour is defined as when your cervix reaches fully, di fully dilated, dilated. So your cervix is what's known as the neck of the womb, so this is your womb, it's what holds your baby in, in place inside you. Placenta is here and this is where your cervix is. Throughout nine, for nine months your cervix has remained tightly closed and during labour it begins to open up and eventually when you reach the second stage of labour it reaches, that's actually nine centimetres, but it's then completely gone from around your baby's head and your baby begins to descend in the birth canal. So, you might be wondering what I am doing with a ping pong ball and a balloon, but there is method to my madness, I promise. Okay, so you can try this at home. The aim is for me to get this ping pong ball inside the balloon. ping-pong ball even go inside there we go okay so now my ping-pong ball is inside the balloon and we're going to blow this up and I'm going to show you how it represents contractions in labor and, how, and moving to the second stage of labor so I'm going to blow this balloon up I'm going to blow it up a little bit more and so if you're trying this at home you can get the ping pong ball so that it rests and covers the whole of the balloon completely. And once it's settled there, it should act as a seal to the balloon and should stop the air from coming out of the balloon. So now we have our ping pong ball inside the blown up balloon. Now the blown up balloon represents your uterus and the, the ping pong ball is gonna represent your baby. Now contractions, in early labour, they might start just a few little ones and they don't necessarily change your cervix, but they start just doing this gently and these are just what we call practice contractions, your body getting you ready. But as you move into established labour and when you move to the second stage of labour, what your contractions are doing is more like this. And I don't know if you can see, but it's pushing down on the ping pong ball against your cervix. And as baby's being pushed down against your cervix, your cervix is getting shorter and thinning out. And you might hear midwives saying, your cervix is now fully effaced or effaced. And that means that it's really thinned out. So that thickness that we see here is gone and it's now very thin. And again, as our contractions get stronger, so as you move from the for what we call the first stage of labour, which is uh, four centimetres to nine centimetres, you might feel your contractions suddenly change. They might become more powerful, more expulsive, so you might get some urges to push, to bear down. Also women at this stage, it's not uncommon for lots of women to feel like they can't cope with this stage of labour and that they need some, and that they need some extra help. So a lot of women will say to us, I can't do it anymore, I've had enough of this, Sometimes you might even say, I want to go home. It's not uncommon to feel like that. This is what we call transitioning, and this is the change from nine centimetres to fully dilated. Um, so this is a time for your birth partner to really recognise that and to really encourage you. And this is when we might say to you, oh, do you want some more pain relief? Should we try a different position? Is there something else you'd like to try? But be reassured, this is very, very normal, and it's just your body moving you into that stage of being fully dilated. And again, what our contractions are doing is this. So now all the length of my cervix has gone and I've just got the balloon pushed tightly against this part here. So that balloon, again, remember, is representing your baby. It's pushed really tightly against the cervix. And if I keep going... This is what we could call in transitioning stage now, okay? So these contractions are very powerful. You're feeling a lot of pressure in your bottom. You might feel like you need to go to the toilet and empty your bowels. Often you'll hear midwives saying, no, this is just, this is just baby pressing down. 
It's not uncommon in this stage of labour to feel very sick, a little bit not yourself. And again, we can help you through this. We, you know, we would always encourage you, get your birth, part, birth partner as well to encourage you. And also to suggest any other kind of things that might help distract you, whether that's a change in position, trying a different form of pain relief, or if you're doing hypnobirthing, remember to get yourself back into that zone and get yourself focused again. And eventually this balloon is going to come flying out. So again, all that length from the cervix is gone. Baby's really pushed against that cervix now. And as you can see, these contractions are pulling up on the uterus and really pushing that baby down against your cervix. Okay. And here's my, my uterus still contracting away. Any minute this ping pong ball is going to be delivered. A bit of a slow delivery, this one. There we go. <laughs> and your baby has been born. Babies don't come flying out like that, I promise. Please don't worry. When you reach the pushing stage, a lot of women are often say to us, I don't want to open my bowels. And this is a perfectly normal thing, so please don't feel like it's anything to be embarrassed about. Actually, midwives get very excited when this happens because we know there's a baby on the way and it's a very good indication that you are fully dilated and you're going to meet your baby soon. So, so this is a pelvis. This is the bone inside, inside you that um, contains all your reproductive organs and your bowel and your bladder. It's also where your uterus lies. For the past nine months, your baby has been sat inside. And towards the second stage of labour, your baby suddenly drops lower and it drops right down onto your bowel, which runs behind your uterus, which is why a lot of women feel very lots, lots of pressure in their bottom. And again, as baby's head drops down, you might feel those urges to push. And in some, for some women, this urge to push will just happen naturally and their bodies will make them push. They can't necessarily stop it happening. For other women, for example, if you have an epidural or... Um, everybody's made differently so some women don't necessarily get that urge to push and we might have to direct you to push um, but with ev with everybody with pushing baby's head eventually comes rock rocks forward gently back and backwards and forwards again sometimes if if your body's doing it on its own it will just come forward itself naturally with each push baby's head comes forward a little bit and then comes back a bit and then it comes back a bit comes forward a bit more and comes back a little bit further and then back forwards a bit more and back a little bit again. Again, this is perfectly normal and this is due to the curve that is in your pelvis and your vagina. Your curve, the vagina is curve shaped. So again, this is to help baby come forward nicely and gently. Lots of people think this is a bit of a hindrance to us, but actually the curve, the natural curve in your pelvis and your vagina helps your body to very gently um, stretch and prevents tearing and prevents baby suddenly flying out which would lead to an equally shocked baby and an equally shocked mummy. So during this stage women often say that they feel a lot of burning and sting stinging sensations and again we will direct you and help you with your pushing. There will come a point when we want you to stop pushing and just breathe and let that baby's head come through. This is just to stop you tearing badly. We also recommend, as midwives, that we have our hand just supporting the lower part of your vagina, which is known as your perineum. And again, that's just to prevent any nasty tears and helps with the, with the healing afterwards. Again, if you don't want us to touch you, that's absolutely fine, but it is something that we recommend and it has been shown to prevent nasty tears. Um, so again, with each push, baby's head comes forward. When it's your first baby, pushing can take anything from 5-10 minutes to a couple of hours. If it's your second baby, this tends to be a lot quicker and not quite so long. But first time round, it's just because your body hasn't done it before, it's got to stretch, so this, this stage can take a little bit longer. Once baby's head is delivered, baby then does some rotating. And it rotates so that then its shoulders fit through the widest part of your, your vagina. And then with the next contraction, baby is born 
And depending on what you would like, we tend to always deliver babies up onto you so they can get some skin to skin immediately. And the second stage of labour is over.